And so welcome to worship this morning. Let's uh, try our refrain. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. So good to have all of you here. Those of you who are watching from home uh, as the uh, congregation gathers in person as best we can and is now reaching out uh, as we've been able to uh, reestablish some of our homebound communion as well and some of our uh, shut-in visits as well. Um, it is so good to be able to reconnect in, in many different ways. Keep folks in your prayers. There's still lots of uncertainty about and so we want to lift up everyone and, and hold them together as best that we can. Uh, as we've gathered for worship this day, uh, let us begin our time together uh, with the uh, Thanksgiving for Baptism. Hallelujah, Christ is racing. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters here you made us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth like rains to our thirsty earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cold water shared with strangers, breathe your peace on your church when we are in fear. Clutter us with your mercy and forgiveness. Set us companion on our journey as we share your life together. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice and Sing. Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us, and we shall be satisfied. Heal us, and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Oh, my God. 
first reading from 1 John chapter 3. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the words goose and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Just as he has commanded us, all who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, and by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the hearing of the gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Now I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. Well, a little time here for storytelling, uh, because as I... Uh, heard this text, I couldn't help but remember one of the first things I learned when I got into high school. Uh, if you think back to that freshman year in high school, there's always a little bit of sense of, oh, this is so great, and a little bit of sense of, oh my gosh, some of those uh, older kids look so much bigger and older than me, and I'm really scared all at the same time. Well, one of the things that uh, a good freshman boy did in my town was you would go out for a football team. And so there were tryouts, and there was always the A team and the B team, and you wanted to get on the A because that's where the cool kids were, and the B team was just, you know, you didn't... Well, the first day of tryouts in high school, we were a bunch of, what do you want to say, macho boys, or at least we thought we were. You know, we're, we're big and tough. We can do this. And uh, we were a bunch of screwballs, was really what it amounted to. And we were all goofing around and punching each other and hitting each other with the pads. This is really cool stuff now, because this is the big time. We all knew 
each one of us was going to be a star. And we were in the big leagues, so this was our time to shine. Well, it took a while for the coach to get our attention because we were so wrapped up in ourselves. Uh, we didn't hear the whistle. We didn't hear him yelling. We didn't hear him or watch him as he slapped a few of the guys up on their helmets and said, pay attention. Finally, he got us quiet, and he said, he goes, there's, there's one rule that we're going to start with. And, and he goes, that rule is, listen. He pointed out that we have two ears, and notice that on our helmets there's a hole by each ear, and only one mouth. So he said, you need to be listening twice as much as you're talking. So when we practice, we need to listen as twice as much. And he said, if you're not listening twice as much and you're talking twice as much, well, you could end up getting hurt. And then he looked at us all and wrapped his arms out like this, and he said, or you could let down your teammates. And if you don't listen, and you're caught not listening, you would also not be playing when game time comes, even after you did your 50 push-ups. That got our attention. He said, so remember, the first rule is you listen to me. Because what happens so often? We can tell with just one word when we're really listening to someone how they are feeling, can't we? We listen to the tone of their voice, not always so much what they're saying. We listen to the speed of how they respond to when we've uh, talked with them. We've learned to listen not so much to the words, but to what's going on and is shared by the facial expressions, by the uh, actions, the responses, the tones of voices. We listen in many ways with our hearts. Simply put, you know, as I uh, have worked with my dog over the past uh, five years now, he was a rescue dog and didn't know how to listen at all. Was kind of a wild maniac when we got him into our house. But now, in an instant, he knows if my voice is urgent or playful, if, he, if I'm disappointed in him or a little bit angry with him, or if I'm encouraging for him. And as it says in the Bible, I know them, they know me, they listen to my voice. We now know each other, and in the blink of an eye, he knows exactly what's coming next. So what's the point? The point is how we listen. In our Bible readings today, um, it becomes very clear that this is one of the key parts of who we are as people of faith, that we learn to listen with our hearts and with our ears, through our experiences. We listen by what we know to be the truth. And we listen through the relationships that we have. And the more you read scripture, the more that you understand that really all of scripture is about that relationship and learning to understand where God's been, what God is doing, and what God has promised to do. And you mold that and, and adjust to that. In our first Bible reading, it said this. We know love by this. Now watch, there's nothing to do with words. That Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. Then we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother and sister in need and, and yet refuses to help. Little children, let, let us love, not so much in words or speech, but in truth and in action. So did you notice in those things where we know, where we show, where we give and celebrate God's love? People listen to what we do, how we do it, what's in our hearts. And so often the words have little to no connection to it. What we heard there is that 
we live in a set, a set life of truth. And when our words do match our actions, then it fully blossoms in front of people. We listen to the truth and we live out the truth through the relationships that we establish with one another. We, as Christians, don't necessarily follow an easy path. In fact, it's a rather difficult one. We follow because the one who gave us life is the one who calls on us now to listen. My sheep know my voice. They listen to my voice. They know me. I know them. And they respond. Love others. Even when it's not convenient. Give to others. Even when it's at your own expense. Make room for the outsider because that's what Jesus did for you. In fact, he even went out of his way in the gospel to say, now I have others that aren't of this fold. A reminder that it wasn't just for those people, but it was for all of God's creation that Jesus came and died and rose. He had the power to take his life down and the power to lift it back up. And so he says, forgive as you've been forgiven. And Jesus forgave by dying for us. Be gracious to others, for you've been given God's grace. Be humble, for God has reached out to you when you were in need. Not so much all the words that we say, but what we do and how we live our life so that they come together and they, they match one to another. Enough of this, praise the Lord, but I hate my brother. I love my brother, but I have nothing to do with God. You've missed the gifts of life. You've missed the gifts, gifts of God's creation and God's love and grace for you. Love the brother, the sister. Love the one we don't know. Give to them. Tend to them, pay attention to them, for they'll let you know what is in their heart. And you get the opportunity to be Christ's presence in the life of another. We don't simply talk about nice stuff. What we do is that we live for others because we've listened to the voice, the life giving death and resurrection of Christ and we've listened to the heart of Jesus who said this is what it's like to follow me. Amen. Our sermon hymn is Listen, God is Calling. <laughs>
people of God, please join me in confessing the feet of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on a purchase pallet, was crucified, died, was buried, he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. A life in the raising Christ will bring our prayers before God. Loving shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace, strengthening our church throughout the world, that we bear witness to your expensive love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you are a generous with the gift of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside, and wilderness may abide with your life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hope-giving Savior, place into our hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Remove any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in the lifting up of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Abiding Savior, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we listen to your call and lay down our lives for those in need. Help us, Lord. Help one another in truth and in action. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we lift up those on Calvary prayer lists and those that you name in your heart at this time. Saving Lord, you restore us to holiness. Help our community in our lives together and give us love as people of faith. Doing challenges and opportunity lead us to hear a life of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In this assurance of the resurrection hope, remember our loved ones who have died in you. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We share that peace with one another. And those online, peace be with you too. Let us pray for the offering. Almighty God, we thank you for that which you have provided. We ask your many blessings upon it, and we pray that you bless your people in everything that they are doing. O oh God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to our suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our deed and our joy, that we should at all times in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sins, who is dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all of the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and the seed and all thy creations, and with angels and high angels, 
We praise your name and join our own any hand. Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, and gave the disciples a taken eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of pain. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of pain. Sitting together, let's pray as Jesus taught disciples, our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, or deliver us from evil. For the eye is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is ready. If you take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drink the blood of Christ shared for you. Let us pray. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. May our gracious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus Christ, the God of life, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our sending him is there's a wideness in God's mercy. Christ is risen. 
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.